All right, it's the Super Syntex uh, Podcast with Chad and DJ. I'm Bryce. It is State Volleyball Week. It's uh, NCAA Tennis Championships. It's everything else that's going on this time of year. But it's week two of the high school football playoffs. First of all, how are y'all doing? Great, great. DJ, you good? Yeah, this is the earliest I've woken up in like a month. So... (laughs) Awesome. We're, we're, we're coming at you on a Thursday morning. By the way, I've got a message for the people, right? Okay. You guys are going to have to bear with me a little bit on this, but I've got a message for young men and for old men. Okay. Message for young men and old men. For young men, I'll start. No, I'll start with old men. I'll start with old men. When you receive a group email from something that you're a member of, right? Just try to find the reply button instead of the reply all button. <laughs> I don't know why old men have to always reply all, right? <laughs> I know exactly what email chain you're talking about. <laughs> and here's my message for young men, okay? My, okay. my message for young men is, is when you go to the gym, these various benches and machine chairs and things like that that, that are all throughout the gym, these are not put there for you to sit and look at your phone on them. <laughs> okay and that's my message that, to people. i just want to say how annoying it is whenever you see a man doing that at the gym and then mm-hmm. if a woman does it they'll throw a fit right they're <laughs> like you're here to work out why are you on your phone you're on your phone <laughs> let, me, let me say for for i i never see women at the gym doing this it's always young men sitting at a machine looking at their phone for minutes on end because if we do it we get yelled at somehow okay. chad you managed to be old and young in one uh rant mm-hmm. but uh old I'm, man old I'm man an equal opportunity the crotchety person <laughs> all right well let's talk football <laughs> uh so the adage says that it's tough to beat uh a team twice in a season and West Orange Stark, of course, will test that theory on Friday night down in Magnolia as uh, the Mustangs will get La Vega for the second time this season. <clears throat> so we've talked about La Vega as a kind of sleeper team, dark horse team for Jerry world. What is it about the pirates that suggests that they can knock off West Orange Stark this time dj you've seen la vega more recently than me so i'll let you have first crack at this one yeah i mean i feel like uh they're mostly clicking on all cylinders obviously coach hyde is always going to say you know there's that one thing that he's going to nitpick right like you know you got to line up better or you know um do this or do that um but i feel like when they played him the first time they were still figuring out First of all, the quarterback position, the O-line was still kind of figuring out, you know, its own thing. Um, And I feel like from what I saw on Friday, La Vega is a lot more efficient now, right? Like Mm. they know what they have to do and they don't have to think about it. Um, I mean, 20 plays in the first half is all it took for them to score. Well, 21 plays if you count the pick six. Um, but yeah, it, it's, and I feel especially that now that Courtney Parr has more games under his belt and, um, you know, J- you throw in Javen Hernandez when you need to, but if you have Courtney Parr in there to throw the ball to Jabari Thornton, they're going to be hard to beat. So, and then obviously Bryson Roland is Bryson Roland and, He's going to roll through people. So, um, rolling, uh, rolling, rolling. Yeah. At the same time, you know, West Orange Stark has also had its own, you know, a lot more games since they played La Vega. And, you know, you can't, you know, just brush them off and say that they're not going to bring their A game. So, um, I mean, we'll see. I do think that La Vega now has a better chance to beat them than they had the first time just because they're more efficient. They know what they're doing. They've seen them before. And so some of those things that they weren't able to do in the first game, they might be able to recognize now. And let's acknowledge here that 
it was what 35 27 yeah first... it, it was an eight point game on a neutral field right. uh at a time when both teams were probably trying to figure <clears throat> out exactly who sure. they are uh it was both teams were coming off a loss that week interesting interestingly uh la vega had lost to salina and i'm looking at was the schedule here, and they had just lost to Nederland. Uh, then, you know, uh, the Mustangs ro- reeled off a winning streak after that. Uh, I did some – before I knew this was a question, I did some, you know, contemplating of this matchup this week. Because in terms of of bigger school playoff teams, La Vega's carrying it towards them and Gatesville are, I think, the two biggest left that we have in our area. Sure. Yep. Uh, Temple, I guess, right? Temple's still playing. No, Temple's out. Temple's out. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, they uh, get, uh, it's all 4A and down. Yeah. Uh, I'm inclined to think playing West Orange Stark early in the season like La Vega did is a big benefit for La Vega. Mm. Because they know what's coming. Right. They have that edge of they beat us last time. And I think they have to feel like they're a better team than they were on September 13th. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I just think I just think La Vega probably saved some things in that game that they that they didn't do that you know. And and you can look ahead in these brackets, and you know that you're probably going to see West Orange Stark in the second round. Either they were Hampshire Fanet and Hampshire Fanet. And by the way, that is the most British sounding. Town school name in all of Texas. <laughs> uh, it looked like they were going to get a hyphen either way. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, West Orange hyphen Stark. But so uh, uh, I, I like La Vega. You know, long story short, I like La Vega in this matchup. All three of us ended up picking La Vega, um, mm-hmm. and I think you know we're on that pirate train right now. We'll see how long it lasts. I agree, Chad. I think this is going to be, uh, from from any classification, I think this is going to be one of the better games this week in the playoffs. Uh, should be a lot of fun. DJ will be down there. Um, you know, <clears throat> we've, co- we've all covered a lot of games before where we've seen the team multiple times in the past, and then somebody else – who may be seeing him for the first time will go, whoa, that that one kid, number 27, is a freshman or, you know, is a sophomore or whatever. Well, I mean, I had that reaction because uh, when I saw La Vega play Lorena uh, because it was my first time seeing La Vega this, this season. And for whatever reason, I hadn't necessarily picked up on the fact that Courtney Parr was indeed a sophomore. And I looked on the roster and I see that, and I'm like, wow, okay. Uh, and you know, I to me, he he continues to grow and to develop, develop. And uh, you know, La Vega has had many teams under Don Hyde and under Willie Williams where the mo was very. Uh, Chad will understand this reference, Johnny Tusa like in terms of let's run the ball, let's play defense, and. This team has a potent passing attack, and and Courtney Parr is really, I think, coming into his own. And so I think uh, he's got to be playing better at this stage of the season than he was back when they played West Orange Stark the first time. Well, and I, Javen Hernandez was uh, <clears throat> kind of their starter and played the majority of the snaps a lot early in the season, and – I think they see opportunities to use both those guys and have used both those guys effectively when they needed to. Yeah. It's almost I, I wish all football teams quarterback position was more like a pitching staff in football, you know. But Yeah, I I tend to think that uh I agree with the old adage that, you know, if you have more than one starting quarterback, you have zero. But um that same night against Lorena, they also played Javen Hernandez. And when I asked about Courtney Parr after the game, you know, Don was uh, quick to praise him, but he also said, we got two good quarterbacks, you know, like, uh, yeah. and I think they do have confidence in Javen Hernandez. So one more point on their passing game before we move on to a different subject. Uh, Bryson, and we talk a lot about Bryson. We know he's a fan of the podcast and we love that. Uh 
he's made a lot of plays in the passing game. That can't be overlooked, uh, how good a receiver he's been for them this year. That's the the modern NFL running back these days. I mean, you better mm-hmm. have a guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield. So. He's Tony Pollard. There you go. Uh, all right, so we've still got seven teams in Central Texas alive in Class 2A. Uh, they're broken up between 2AD1 and 2AD2, but uh, those seven are Hamilton, Axtell, Crawford, how about the Crawford Pirates, uh, Marlin, Bremond, Mart, and Wortham. Um, so we've mentioned it before that one guy on a Class 2A team can make a lot of difference. Um, so with that in mind, who is your top difference maker out of our local 2A teams that are still playing? There's some good ones. DJ, I'll let you have first crack again. Um, shoot. Okay. Obviously, when you think of Mart, Demontrell Medlock does everything for them. You know, even even though some other guys have stepped up throughout the season, like you know D'Angelo Rhodes and uh, uh you know the um, Gillespie the brothers on defense, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, you know, you still think of Medlock because you know he. He went from quarterback to receiver. He does a lot of stuff on defense as well. Um, and so, and, and for him to be a senior and to be one of the guys that has been on this journey with them of, you know, of being in the playoffs and being at Jerry World and then just being close enough and not be, being able to, you know, get that title. Um, he, I feel like he's got a lot of drive and a lot of passion and, and, um, and a lot of like, yeah, like I'm I'm not in control of this team, but I'm carrying a lot of the responsibility, right? Uh, and you could tell going into the season that, that there was that sort of weight on his shoulders, especially with J.D. Bell leaving um, to go to university. So he stands out to me, you know, for Mart, just his level of experience and, and the ability that he, anywhere that you put him, he's going to produce. Um and then, you know, I think about, I was actually talking to Coach Rogers earlier about, you know, Marlin and how they don't just have one guy. You know, they, it, when you're at a 2A two two level and there's always that one guy that stands out, but they don't just have one guy. You know, you've got Roderick Suters, you've got Caden Judy, you've got Tyron Bell and Bryson Maxwell Steele and D'Angelo Wright, who has kind of, you know, had a standout sophomore season, especially at running back. Coming in, we thought it was going to be all Ty Bell, you know, because he had been gone uh, with an injury. But he's leaned more into the def- defensive side of the ball. And D'Angelo Wright, uh, they call him D'Lo <laughs> over there, um, has, you know, been the breakout on in the running game. Um, and then with, like, Axtell, Levi Le- Leathers was the guy. And I actually found out <laughs> today that um, he's not back. He was He's out possibly for the season. They think... You know, if they continue in the in the playoffs, that they might be able to get him back eventually. But and I don't know who reported that he was back during district play. But they've been running wildcat with Colden Horn and um, uh, AJ, uh, and you know they're they're kind of. I feel like those two guys stepping into that role has it, it's definitely a next man up mentality. But with Colden especially because. When the Horns came in and took over and all that coaching staff, um, you know, he was the quarterback. And so he's been in that position before. And, um, you know, they they kind of trust in in him to be able to, um, you know, take the lead. And um, have now, really- say, say, if he says one guy. You're taking all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher well, said. <laughs> look, I don't. The question was misleading because he's like the difference maker for our remaining two way teams. I don't. I, know. I, I did mean, uh, I did mean one, but uh, but you hit on several there. Those were good. Yeah, Chad. Well, you can talk about the rest of the teams, Chad. <laughs> the rest of you, you've taken all of them. Give me. I your, have guys for every your, team. Okay, wait, wait, wait. You didn't. You didn't talk about Tank Scott. I did not talk uh, about Tank. Tank I was about to. <laughs> The thing is, Bremon is a lot like how you described Marlon. They got they got several dudes uh, with, with playmaking ability. Tank Scott's done it on both sides of the football. My initial answer before you took all of them was going to be Colden Horn. 
Um, that's the guy who, when it seems like when they need a play, they put it in Colden Horn, Horn's hands and, uh, you know, coach's son. And, and uh, you know, you get – you can kind of – it's not hard to to, to catch – the um, intensity uh, that Craig Horn coaches with when you're on the sideline, especially over there. And uh, it seems like Colton, you know, has that same intensity when it, when it gets to, you know, we need to make a play to win time. He, he does it. Uh, they're in the second round of the playoffs this year. So, so good for them. One thing about it, uh, Hamilton, the Hamilton Bulldogs among us have become famous for not sending us a lot of info to go on. We try to get a hold of them every preseason to no avail. But if things shake out like it looks like they may, might shake out, the Hamilton Bulldogs might get a lot more scrutiny from the Waco Tribune Herald. Than the well, and to that point, I was actually going to mention that. Uh, yeah, so Hamilton uh, obviously exists on the fringe of our coverage area and uh, plays a lot of games on that fringe and then sometimes even further be, west, even yeah. beyond the fringe when they get in the mm. playoffs. <laughs> uh, this week... Uh, Michael Haig, I sent him to the Hamilton game, which is up in Waxahachie. We'll get a better look, I think, at the Bulldogs, um, who do have a good quarterback. Uh, I was about to look that up. It's Jackson. Uh, is it Jackson Edwards? I, I, Jackson I, Pollock? <laughs> I think it may be Jackson Edwards. But at any rate, um, yeah, we'll get a we'll get a better understanding, I think, of Hamilton uh, this week. But um, I will go a little deeper into um, Marlin just because. Um, so DJ rattled off a bunch of names there, and one of them being Bryce and Maxwell Steele. Um, I just feel like when you're at the one A and two A level, if you've got a kid who's just bigger than everyone else on the field um, and stronger. Uh, talk about making a difference because first of all, you're probably going to plug him in to both lines, uh, you know, O-line, D-line. Um, and clearly he's been a beast uh, defensively. Obviously he's our reigning Super Syntex Defensive Player of the Year. Um, and only a junior at that. Right. And a tackles for loss machine just gets a lot of plays in the backfield and uh, you just have a feeling that um, he's just destroying blockers, you know, I mean, that they probably need two guys to block him and that frees up Ty Bell and others to do their thing. So um, to me, when you've got a guy like that, that is so, so huge. Um, I, uh, this is going down another rabbit hole, but, you know, we had Methodist Children's Home playing for a state TCAF title last week. Um, they did not win, but, uh, their coach was mentioning, <clears throat> you know, that one of their kids, not London Bickham, who's clearly their best player, but one of their kids was, uh, was injured and didn't know if he was going to play or not. And, and it's their guy that was like six, five, three forty. <laughs> You know, and to have a guy like that in six man TCAF football, I mean, like I said, if you just have a guy when you're in a small school that's just bigger and stronger than everybody, that is a huge difference maker. Right, right. Because, you know, the, the strategy there would be wherever that guy is, go somewhere else. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Exactly. Uh, Wrecks your game plan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, just. To mention more of them real quick because we didn't cover them, but John Russ Black has uh, is their quarterback linebacker, kind of leads all of their statistical categories. So I, I've actually been really in place impressed with Wortham this season and just the, their ability to kind of uh, surprise people because we don't talk about them much, and I feel like they've been a little underrated so far. John, well, we've all picked them to go to the third round of the playoffs. Yep. Uh... John Ross Black's parents have to be Dallas fans from this, the TV show Dallas from the 80s <laughs> because J.R. Ewing's son on that show was John Ross. Mm -hmm. uh, so there you go. A little, little uh, 80s uh, TV trivia for you. Awesome. Um, so awesome. one of the ways we judge a good team or, or we judge how good a game might be um, is by this little test. Was it an easy game for us to pick or was it a hard game for us to pick? So with that in mind, 
what was the hardest game for y'all to pick this week and why? I mean, obviously, La Vega, West Orange, Stark was a coin toss, you know. Yeah. Um, we did all are, three end up going with La Vega, but yes. Uh, I, I think that I think there's a tendency for us to want to believe in the Pirates because we want we want, you know, we want bigger schools going farther in the playoffs. It, it, sure. it increases visibility of everything that we do. Let's not let let's not, you know, make that a secret. Um, but uh not that you know, not that we're fans, but um, I, I think that we look at the factors and they're pretty even, and we have reason to believe La Vega can keep going, and so we pick them to keep going. You know, that's so that's you don't waste much time thinking about that. I guess is what I'm trying to say, not very eloquently. Uh, so let me be to the point on my real answer, which is I had a hard time <clears throat> picking Cherokee Oglesby. Okay, Cherokee looks really good. They're ten and one. Obviously, you know Oglesby. Uh, probably has one of, if not the uh, leading candidate for Super Syntex uh, Six Man Player of the Year. Tyler Fawcett, sure. Yep, yep. Uh, so that's my answer. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, DJ. Um, actually, the Crawford Ganado game was really hard for me. I okay, I would have actually said that would have been one of the easier. Yeah, ones. I don't know. I just be because of the last few weeks and Crawford kind of like sneaking back in and and doing the thing that Crawford does you know which is you know they they're in the playoffs and they play some of their you know hardest toughest football in the playoffs and so I was like well maybe maybe they might surprise us but I am going with the safe pick on that one um the Fairfield Yoakum game was also a little tough mm. for me I didn't think Yoakum was gonna be Troy but you know, sometimes that those first round jitters or, or you know, not <clears throat> having that experience of being there can sometimes get to you. And um, I was a little annoyed because if they had beat Yokum, then Troy and Fairfield would have played in Waco. At midway, mm. yeah, that was yeah. where that game was going to be. Um. So yeah, and then <clears throat> I gave Gatesville the benefit of the doubt. You know, I know it's Columbia, but the Hornets have been really tough you know, towards the end of the season. And, um, I mean, uh, Rayshon Smith is, I, I just kind of want to see them, him continue to play football here. So, um, he yeah, still has we'll got that defense wins championships things going. I, I feel like their defense is, is pretty dang good. Um, so we'll see if that can prevail. They can get some slow burning, you know, Rayshon Smith drives and, and play some good defense. I mean, that would be a strategy for obviously keeping West Columbia off the field and uh, maybe making that a game. I do agree with DJ. I thought the Fairfield Yoakum game was kind of a toss up. Chad, you and I went uh, opposite ways on that. When I took Fairfield, you took Yoakum. DJ took Fairfield. Uh, that one is going to be a, a fun one. I think, I think, DJ's right. Uh, I think we all actually picked Troy to beat Yoakum uh, the week before. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're both seven and four. Um, should be a fun one. I think Fairfield is a team we probably haven't talked a ton about this year. Again, on the fringes of our area, the other direction than Hamilton uh, uh, out to east. Um but a really good quarterback in Cole Collins and um, just, you know, they've played well all year. Um, they've been in that Eastern leaning district out there. And we know some teams from East Texas sometimes are tough. So um, I think they're probably battle tested. So it'll be fun. We're covering that game as well on Friday. So uh, looking forward to that one. That one's down at Wildcat stadium. Well, and uh, you know, Speaking of that area, the Tig Lions could be your upset special against Hitchcock. But, be fun, yeah. But we all went with Hitchcock, the ranked, the ranked team there. Sure, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, I would not put it past Tig to to get to the next round. Um, <clears throat> so we all do a lot of driving this year uh, as we sit here today and talk. Rod and I will be going up to Garland later this later today. That's not super far, but uh, but trust me, Rod's already grumbling uh, <laughs> as, as we go to watch Crawford uh, play for a state volleyball championship. Uh, you know, the sun came up tomorrow, this morning, didn't it? Huh? 
The sun came up this morning. The sun came right? up. Rod, sun came up, up, buddy. Rod, and Rod, no, what I'm saying is every day the sun comes up and every day Rod grumbles. He happily <laughs> grumbles as he goes and works his you can set your day. You can set your watch by it, mm -hmm. is what you're saying. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Let's not make this a Rod bashing podcast. Uh, we love Rod. I'm saying um, it in the nicest possible way that he grumbles his way through 16 hour days and works harder than anybody else. Oh, in Central Texas. Easily, easily. So, yeah, we drive a lot. We go to these playoff games. They're all over the place. Chad, you'll be down in Smithville. DJ will be in Magnolia tomorrow. Um, so when you're headed to the game, what is on your radio what are you listening to what's your go-to song dj you got you got it sounds like she's ready? queuing it up we're gonna get copyrighted <laughs> gonna violated, violations i'm not gonna play it um I, the thing is is i listen to a lot of different types of music right like i i will especially so i'm going to magnolia that's a three-hour drive after the game i'm driving to my parents' house. I was going to go to Vinton, but my dad was like, oh, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> he's got four horses running, five horses running on Saturday. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go home afterward. And I was like, okay. Um, so I'm driving four hours after the game. And uh, I just, it, it goes from like pop to rock to Mexican regional to Japanese pop to um Japanese pop okay yeah uh to like Italian uh gondola music I don't know the classical and stuff jazz I love jazz uh but if I have to pick one song that I could play on repeat on a long drive it will probably be uh all these things I've done by the killers ah uh, yeah it's a good one it's a good yeah. one Okay. Okay. So, uh, by the way, DJ, that reminded me. One of my new favorite bands is an all-female three pay three piece hard rock band from Mexico called The Warning. The Warning. Oh my yeah. gosh, they're so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I've got a little bit. I got to twist your question a little bit, Bryce. All right. I've got a song that I put on after I after I've sat in my car and written my story and I pull out of a parking lot, All right. I like to listen. Yeah. I like to listen to uh traveler by Chris Stapleton. <clears throat> what a voice. Which, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stapleton just uh, obviously brings it. <clears throat> uh, uh, take that a little bit further too. That's a, that's a good, my good, it's my trusty roll away song. I used to a little bit darker. I used to, whenever a team was eliminated from the playoffs that I covered that game, I will listen to Creeping Death by Metallica. <laughs> but but then one of the coaches of the teams that after weeks after that game actually died. And so I was like, you know what? I don't think I'll do that anymore. Ouch. That's pretty yeah, I told morbid. You it was a little bit dark. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. morbid. <clears throat> uh been on many, many road trips. Um and you know, I mean, it's it's a little on the nose, but um life is a highway no uh <laughs> driving my life away by okay eddie rabbit uh, yeah yep. is, is a good one eddie but, rabbit's a, a great road song musician like i love a rainy night that's a great that's a it great is it is but uh i mean i just uh, like if i ever hear any of my favorite songs uh i mean it doesn't matter if i'm in the car or elsewhere uh that's always good. And one of my favorite songs, um, and certainly I love to hear it in the summertime, but we're not talking about the summertime right now, but uh, Boys of Summer by Don Henley is such a great song. And like whenever you're in the car uh, and you hear that song, I mean, you know, it's just, I, I love it. I love it. I can't help but I sing. like the Atari's uh, cover of it. Okay. Really, it, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more fast paced, but it's uh, yeah, no, that's definitely a good one. Uh, I learned that song on guitar on musician a while back in the summer. I, I played it a little bit. It's, it's a tough little tough little riff. At this point, Win Emmons is probably going. Look, I don't have any pictures I can use with this stuff that y'all are talking about now. The warning, baby. He can put a picture of the warning up. Maybe. <laughs> we did go down some <laughs> rabbit holes. Uh, 
I think this was a productive and informative podcast, even though we're at 33 minutes at this point. (laughs) It was, it was. Uh, So as mentioned, Chad, you will be at the Gatesville uh, West Columbia game. In Smithville, Texas, a new stadium for me, a new town. You don't, you don't get that very often. I've never been to Smithville, Texas. Yeah. Way, way down there. Uh, Kind of what? Sort of San Marcos, San Antonio? Well, speaking of road trips, Lockhart might be on the way. So there you know you what go. that would necessitate. There you go, baby. I was in Lockhart just a couple of weeks ago mm. for uh, Denby's birthday. But uh, DJ, as mentioned, will be headed to Magnolia, see La Vega, West Orange Stark. That'll be a fun one. It'll be nice to be there, not for a wedding. <laughs> All my friends get married there for some reason. In Magnolia? Okay. In Magnolia. <laughs> Uh, DJ, you got to tweet the score, right? You got to tweet the score every time you tweet because I'll be watching that one closely and I don't won't have time to root around to figure out what the score is. There you go. There you go. That's a that's a complaint anytime you're listening to a radio play-by-play guy who doesn't mention the score. You're like, "Tell me the score." Uh and so I had kept Friday open in case West volleyball was playing for state. Uh, so I'll write up some games from the house here, uh, including uh, Baylor basketball, who's in the Bahamas. It'd be nice to be in the Bahamas right about now. But Yeah, I would like to see Baylor rough up St. John's. I think I mentioned that the other night to you. Yeah. They and... get St. John's today, uh, and then they would play either Tennessee or Virginia. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Uh, on that note, not that we're fans here, but, man – uh, sure would like to see those kids at Crawford and Coach Coker get a volleyball state championship. Be very cool. Uh, it'll be tough. Crawford Iola, you are you wrote about it. Uh, it's a it's. I mean that's the matchup, man. You know one versus two. Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't ever count out those kids from Crawford. Those girls right. are tough, man. So yeah, we'll see how it comes out. All right, see y'all.